Well, hi, folks. Let me just sit you down somewhere comfortable. Huh. Books a Million just sent me a coupon. It's like it knows, wait for it, that I'm here. Oh, angelic choir with a not-so-angelic voice. Guess who just got some birthday money? Twenty dollars. Uh -huh. So, I wanted to make my own book challenge, and so I finally figured out what I want to do. What's like the main things you look for in a book? Like you see it for the first time and like what's gonna make you pick it up and want to read it, okay? Is it the cover? Yeah. Is it the summary? The little description on the back of the book? Yeah. Is it the author? Could be. But what about the first line? That first line, it's like the third first impression. It, you gotta nail it. So I'm like, that's it. That's the challenge. This is the first line buy challenge. I am going into my bookstore and I'm going into like the thrift section, you know, gonna spend my money wisely. More bang for my buck. And I am gonna be buying books based on the best first lines I could find. Oh my gosh, a leaf just like splattered, not splattered on my windshield and I thought it was a roach for a second. Oh yeah, welcome to my car. Its name is Ferdinand, but yeah, just going into Books A Million, buying books based on their amazing first lines. There are some rules to this challenge though. So obviously, walk in through the doors. This can be done at a bookstore or a library. Probably have a camera with you. I'm allowed obviously to look at the title and the cover, but I cannot flip the book over and look at the summary. I am buying these books based on the first line. It's a prologue, first line of the prologue, but just has a first chapter first line of the chapter. As a writer, I think a lot about like that mm, the oomph of the first line. I'm like, I gotta perfect that first line somehow. And so I look at all these other books and I'm reading their first lines and I like start to like figure out what grabs my attention. It's either like a catchy like one-liner, like aliens are stupid from the fifth wave, which I'm reading right now. Or it's like a verb, an action, like the assailant's knife kissed my cheek as it swept past in a deadly arc. Oh my gosh, why is this a assassin after you so early on. You must be a troublemaker. Stuff like that. Catchy or just grabby? Catchy grabby. But I also like to figure out what first lines I don't like. Usually it's like trigger words. Like story, memory, life. Like this is how it all ended but then begun. Everything I knew was lost in an instant. Stuff like that. That like sentimental. Like oh this is going to be tragically tragic. Stuff like that. You can kind of get it. First lines I have the word like story in it. Don't make, don't remind me that your book is an actual story because I want to think it's real. Don't say the word story as your first line. This is the story of how it all ended. I'm like, I hate that. I actually do. It makes me go like, mm, no thanks. And then like conviction struck me right in the chest. Because like this was like five years ago when I realized that I do not like books that start out with this is the story of how it all ended or something like that. And I'm like, oh, Casey says conviction. What's the first line of your work in progress? The story of a king begins with an execution. Guess who went home and promptly deleted some stuff? Me. So yeah, once this Books A Million opens, I'm taking you with me and we're just gonna plop down in the middle of the store and just tear through some first lines. And it's gonna like just open, so it's gonna be probably just me and the employees in there. And my voice is gonna be like ricocheting off the walls. They're gonna be staring at me in my cheap Walmart camera. So yeah, facing my fears, vlogging in public. It's gonna be interesting. I'll bring you guys back out when it is time to go inside. So stay tuned. Okay, let's get into the awkward filming. Yes, the section where I belong. I wonder how long it's gonna take me to like look through all these books and like read their first lines. This is so cool. Uh, I mean like I only, like the song says, I got $20 in my pocket. And my favorite authors just released a book today and I want to buy that, but no. We will wait for it to come to the library and be savvy savers of money. Ooh, this one's blue. This one literally says, I turned 60 this year. That means I get a second colonoscopy. Not really the catchy first line that I want and need right now. Shadowlands. <laughs> Sophia, the year 2008. Chain night happens once a week on Thursdays. Don't care what chain night is. Ooh, flowers. We were made once. We were made once. Oh, wait, I'm kind of interested in that. We were made once. Are you like a homunculus? Hmm, I'll think about that one. The favorite sister. A man whose name I do not know slides his hand under the, ooh. 
That one's a little risque. Oh, this one has a, a dragon on it, so you know, like instant points. It literally starts to tell me a story. Oh. Mm. Maybe. Another part I did not mention in the beginning is that I am allowed to like look up the cover and the name of the book and like just see if it's the first in a series so I'm not accidentally like buying the fourth book or something. Because if I buy like a fourth book and I don't have the rest of the books, guess who's going to be mad? Oh, I actually want to get this book but I know what it's about so that's cheating. I don't like this book. It doesn't tell me enough information. Something else I'm learning. Don't start the first line off with, my name is Rosa Dawn. No one really cares. Ooh, this one looks angsty. <sighs> Didn't give me enough angst. I don't know a lot of things. Me neither. This one starts out with murder, and I'm for it. First one. Oh, yeah. Okay, I got four so far. So let's go find that dragon book again and see if it's like the first or like the fifth in the, in the series. Book one, book one. The dragon is mine. Okay, I got five books, so I think we are good to go. Let's go pay for our junk. I'm gonna have to pass that book I actually like really wanna buy. It's by the same duo of authors that wrote The Wife Between Us, my favorite thriller, and I'm like, <sighs> oh wait, what's this book? Is that a walnut or a pecan? I don't, I don't know my nuts. Okay, I'm back in the car, but why do I look so pale? Is that just me? Or is my camera adjusting to the light? Hi. Swear I didn't look this washed out earlier, but who cares? I did it. Oh my gosh, I was able to get five books, all based on their amazing first lines. Hopefully that leads to an amazing book. And I was able to do it about not a lot of awkwardness on my part, vlogging in a mostly empty store, talking into a camera in front of the workers. And like, they pretty much know me. Probably not by name, but they like know my face because I come in there all the time. Is so I like water up to the cash register with my five books and the lady's like oh you got enough books for the day and I'm like just for the day I'll be back tomorrow <laughs> guys I'm gonna show you what I bought now and I'm actually gonna be able to like look at the descriptions because I wasn't able to do that okay first book I got was shallow graves sounds like a thriller I hope it is is by Kelly Wallace Got it for $3.97 American. Okay, when 17 year old Breezy Lynn wakes up in a shallow grave one year after her death, she doesn't remember who killed her or why. Okay, this sounds like a good book so far. I have good taste, but somehow she's conscious, lifelike, but with a heartbeat that comes and goes. Not only that, she's able to sense who's around her, who around her is hiding a murderous past and exact quick brutal revenge on those who do. Oh, this sounds cool. In life, Breezy was always drawn to the elegance of the universe and the mystery of the stars. She studied physics, fought with her sisters, and kissed both boys and girls. Mm, love life. Now in a strange new existence, she must set out to find answers and discover what is to become of her in this gritty, dangerous world to which she now belongs, where killers hide in plain sight and a sinister cult is hunting for strange creatures like her. What she finds is at once empowering, redemptive, and dangerous. Okay, so this actually sounds like a pretty cool book. Girls basically a zombie comes back to enact vengeance. I am down with that 100%. Okay, 
Dance of Thieves. This is like a pretty cool cover, by the way. It's got that classic fantasy vibe that I love. And also, real quick before I look at that part, I noticed that this is the same author that wrote the Kiss of Deception series. My favorite booktuber, Murphy Napier. She like loves that series. I have not read it yet, so hopefully this will be as good as she says the other one is. Let's see, Dance of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson. Oh maps. A stunning new adventure set in the kingdom of Remnant. Oh yeah, the other series is called the Remnant series. A formidable outlaw family that claims to be first among nations. A son destined to lead. Thrust suddenly into power. Three fierce young women of the Rathan. What's a Rathan? The queen's premier guard. A legendary street thief leading a mission determined to prove herself. A dark secret that is a threat to the entire continent. When outlaw leader meets reformed thief, a cat and mouse game of false moves ensues, bringing them intimately together in a battle that may cost them their lives and their hearts. Oh, mm, okay. We got some romance. We got some, like, kingdom politics. I am ready for some betrayal. But maybe I should see if my library has, like, the original series first. I think this is, like, the Six of Crows spin-off equivalent. So I think it will be okay to read it, like, as a standalone. Oh, I forgot to read you the first line in these books. So back to Shallow Grave, the zombie girl who's gonna like bring vengeance on everyone. The first line was, the first time I killed a man, it was an accident. Just that, okay. Why'd you kill a man? This is your first time, you killed more? How was it an accident? What man did you kill the guy? I was intrigued. Good first line. First line in Dance of Thieves. The ghosts are still here. All right. So, ghosts, zombies, what else? Okay, Glittering Court by Rochelle497. This is apparently the same lady who read, I mean not read, although she probably did read it. The She wrote the Vampire Academy series, have not read those. But just looking at the cover, I'm getting some of those, um, the selection vibes, like, you know, pretty ball gowns, girl looks beautiful. The first line was, I never planned on stealing someone else's life. Ooh, okay, so we're going undercover, for what? Let's see what this book is about. Big and sweeping, spanning from the refined palaces of Osfrid to the gold dust and untamed forest of Andoria, the glittering court tells the story of Adelaide, an Osfridian countess who poses as her servant to escape an arranged marriage and start a new life in Andoria, the new world. But to do that, she must join the glittering court. Huh, I gotta turn the AC on in here, just hold on a second. When I get like hot, I start like sneezing. Does that make sense? Maybe. Oh, I found gum. Yay. I need to get some food, man. Maybe that's why I was sneezing. Both a school and a business venture, the glittering court is designed to transform impoverished girls into upper class ladies who appear destined for power and wealthy marriages in the new world. I'm definitely getting a selection vibe. Adelaide naturally excels in her training. Oh my gosh, she another girl. Like not like other girls, other girl. She even makes a few new friends. The fiery former laundress Tamsin in the beautiful Serminican refugee Mira. She manages to keep her true identity hidden from all but one, the intriguing Cedric Thorne. Mmm, nice name. Son of the wealthy proprietor of the glittering court. When Adelaide discovers that Cedric is hiding a dangerous secret of his own, together they hatch a scheme to make the best of Adelaide's de deception. Complications soon arise. First as they cross the treacherous seas from Osset to Andoria, and then when Adelaide catches the attention of a powerful governor. Ooh, love triangle, love, love triangle. I got, I'm for that. But no complication would prove quite as daunting as the potential, as the potent attraction simmering between Adelaide and Cedric. An attraction that, if acted on, would scandalize the glittering court and make them both outcast in wide, vastly uncharted lands. Okay, court romance. Just like, a uh, Grisha. And a selection. We can do this. Not that intrigued, but I am intrigued by that first line, so maybe it will be amazing. I will be able to properly judge once I read the books. I think I'm gonna have like a, just a one giant vlog dedicated to reading these specific books. The first line by vlog. Okay, lanterns, ember. Look at all that like edgy black and gold, and like that skull, and those bugs, they're beetles, and now there's like, they're lightning bugs, but they're beetles. Intrigued. First line is, Jack sat on top of the covered bridge in his favorite spot, his arm draped over his carved pumpkin. Why you got a pumpkin, bro? This Halloween? So this is like a weird connection, but I remember reading um, The Dreadful Life of... The Dreadful... Dread, dread, blah, 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 blah. 
the dreadful tale of Prosper Redding. And like it's a boy, middle school boy. His family is cursed so that he has this demon that's basically living in his body. And this body, no, not this body, this demon takes over his body at night and goes like on a friendly little jaunt around town at night when the boy is sleeping. And he like eats all the rotten pumpkins because he's a demon and he likes rotten food. So that's like the first picture that came into my mind, just like a demon eating a rotten pumpkin. And I was like, okay, I'm here for it. Let's do it. Give me the, oh, this a lot of pumpkins. I'm for it. I'm seeing now that there's like an entire poem in the front dedicated to pumpkins. Ember O'Dare has a secret. She's a natural born witch. From an early age, she's had a knack for crafting potions and felt an indescribable pull to the ancient bridge in her town of Hallowell. Little does Ember know, the bridge is a gateway to the other world. A realm crawling with fiendish beasts. And Jack, an ever vigilant watchman, is committed to keeping meddlesome mortals away. His task is simple, or it would be if he weren't falling for the very witch he's trying to keep out. Did I just buy a Serpent and Dove spinoff? Or was this published first? Hold on. I'm gonna do some research after this. Anyways, undeterred by Jack's warnings, Ember crosses into the Forbidden Plain and sets off a chase through a world beyond her wildness imaginings. Now Jack must do everything in his power to rescue his true love before both the earthly and unearthly worlds descend into chaos. Okay, we're going into a demon realm for it. I actually picked some pretty cool books. I have amazing taste again. And the last one, the one with the dragon on it, that better be amazing because the dragon instantly says, hey, the potential for this book amazingness has increased sevenfold. Seven, because it's like kind of the shape of the dragon's neck and head, never mind. First line, tell me a story. Tell me a story. I want to know more. I want to know more. Is there a dragon? I want a dragon, please. I need my dragon. Hold on. Look at that fancy dude. What kind, is that like a tube on top? Are you like a giant vacuum cleaner? Let's see what the story is about. When destiny calls, there's no fighting back. Huron grew up in the slums of Quirr, a thief and a minstrel's son raised on tales of long lost princes and magnificent quests. When he is claimed against his will as the missing son of a treasonous prince, Kieran finds himself at the mercy of his new family's ruthless power plays and political ambitions. I am for evil family members. That's my jam. Practically a prisoner, Kieran discovers that being a long lost prince is nothing like what the storybooks have promised. The storybooks lied about a lot of other things too. Dragons, demons, gods, prophecies, true love, and how the hero always wins. Then again, maybe he isn't the hero after all, for Kieran is not destined to save the empire. He's destined to destroy it. Oh, uh, I want to read this right now please I am so excited this was a good idea guys that is my challenge haul I am uh, again so good I'm happy I'm also really hungry that guy literally just like stomped his foot in the parking lot like he was like throwing a tantrum I'm like huh huh I love people watching it's fun especially when they don't know you're there oh yeah I'm gonna do a reading vlog just like all about these books see if they live up to their amazing first lines and guys thank you so much for watching if you want to do this challenge do it go to a bookstore go to a library just find those first lines that really draw you in don't look at the summaries just go for it be adventurous have fun it's reading that's what it's all about I am Casey lost in the bookcase thank you guys so much for watching I'm gonna go get me some avocado toast